Two years in Chicago for the Cup Series. Both years full of rain and sanity and a shortened race. Hello everyone, my name is Kyle aka Racing Boy Short and this is my channel where I talk NASCAR, NASCAR news and everything NASCAR. If you haven't already, I would appreciate you subscribing to the channel. I do multiple NASCAR videos throughout the week. Also, give me your thoughts on this video. What did you think about the race in Chicago? If you noticed, I've been making some changes around the channel. I have a new logo. I'm kind of changing a bunch of stuff, working on graphics and different things for the channel at the moment. So just warning, expect to see some more changes being done to the channel within the next week, maybe even two. And that's also why tonight I won't have a Haley Deegan or a video about the electric NASCAR vehicle. We will, I will be having a video on those subjects releasing hopefully tomorrow. I should have shorts out talking about both of those currently right here on my YouTube, but I'm talking about full length videos. All right, let's talk about that crazy race we had in Chicago last night, the second year the Cup Series is at the Chicago Street Course. And two straight years, it's been a crazy race, a bunch of rain. Both years, it ended up ending early. And both years, I'd say we had a surprise winner. We'll get to the surprise winner in a second. But one of the big differences that we had this weekend compared to last year for the Chicago Street Course, last year the whole entire weekend was full of rain. All the concerts got canceled. The Xfinity race got shortened by a lot. I think it didn't even make it close to halfway. I think it was like 35 or 40% finished when they called that race. Like I said, all the concerts got canceled. whole bunch of flooding. The Cup Series race got shortened. A whole bunch of nonsense and craziness happened last year. We weren't even really able to see if the Chicago Street Course was able to have good racing. Well, this year for the Chicago Street Course, most of the weekend went without a hitch. Didn't have any rain for most of this weekend. We had the Xfinity race go well. We had all the concerts go well, it seemed like. It seemed like the fans had a great time at the event. There was... Some crazy concerts, some crazy videos and pictures out there look like it was a lot of fun for both the classic NASCAR fans and the new fans alike. Then, of course, we got to Sunday and it looked like there was a chance of rain throughout the week. The forecast was saying different things early on in the week. It seemed like it wasn't going to rain. Then it seemed like it was. And then the morning of, I think it was reported as a 30% chance of rain. And we definitely ended up getting that rain. Unfortunately, it was a downpour. So we ended up having a red flag in the event at one point. But we will get to that red flag in a moment. Let's get to the actual start of the race here. One of the big stories going into the event was the two favorites, Kyle Larson and Shane Van Gisbergen, considered to probably be the two highest favorites on everybody's list to win this event. Competed for the win the day before in the Xfinity Series event. And it looked like early on in this event that those two were going to compete for the win. Along with potentially Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick, and Christopher Bell. Well, right before the race even got going, we began to get some rain. We began to hear some rumblings about how NASCAR might give the option to the teams that they can either have the wet weather tires or the slick tires, then the call did come down for that. I was really happy to see that. It makes for another form of strategy. And we had different teams on wet weather, different teams on slick tires. Early on in the race, it seemed like it was the better decision to have the slick tires as you had a lot of drivers on those wet weather tires, have them wear out. Pretty quickly because they do really bad on a dry racetrack. They just tear to shreds pretty quickly. 
those drivers are driving around three or four seconds slower than the drivers on the slick tires. After the early goings of the event, and I'd say the early goings were fairly calm, didn't have too much madness go on in the early goings of this event. That's when we began to get heavier rain, even a little bit of a downpour. NASCAR threw it under caution, gave the teams the option if they want to switch tires. Every team at this point switched to the wet weather tires. But at my, in my opinion, when they did this restart, it was way too wet. A bunch of drivers even almost spun out on the restart because it seemed like that last corner was the worst corner for the rain it just kind of pulled up it was a little lake right there right there in the middle of the restart zone and a lot of drivers almost spun out coming out of the corner luckily i didn't i didn't i don't think i saw anybody spin out during that restart but i think it was literally only a lap later where we saw one of our two big favorites shane van gisbergen get taken out of the race after chase briscoe loses his, loses control of his car sliding in to the bumper of SVG. SVG would hit the wall and that would end his day. His car would not move from that position, climbing out of the car early. Very unfortunate to see for Shane. Then after that, I think NASCAR made the decision that they should have made before that because it was clearly too wet out there at the time. They threw the red flag because of how wet the track was and how heavy the rain was, how heavy the mist was from behind the cars eventually the rain really slowed down stopping at points where nascar was able to get the track pretty clear of all the puddles and at this point in the event once they finally got the track clear and ready for racing everybody kind of knew that the race was probably going to be shortened because nascar said early on in the day and this was very good on nascar to point this out very very early on if they got into this situation that if they got into the situation where they were pushing the race late they said the darkness time on when they would end the race when it was done would be 8 20 local time 9 20 eastern time when it would hit that time the next time they hit the start finish line it would be two laps to go and the very next time it would be the white flag essentially ending the race there was a lot of strategies thrown into the mix when it came to timing it right when it came to taking fuel and taking tires we saw a lot of different strategies and then also at this point we saw a couple of drivers really stand out from the rest of the field you had christopher bell you had tyler reddick you had ty gibbs you had kyle larson you had a bunch of drivers that were really standing out at this point in the race and then right when you think you might have found the favorite to finally win this event there he goes crashing out of the race and that was kyle larson kyle larson misjudging turn six and i feel like turn six in both years of the chicago street course has been the big trouble turn for a lot of these drivers it seems to be really bumpy getting into that turn and it's a high speed straight away into a very tight left-handed corner we've seen a lot of mistakes there and there was another mistake made by larson here as you see kyle larson just gets into the corner with too much speed and to avoid taking out ty gibbs because there was a good chance they both would have went flying into the tire barrier he turns right takes himself out instead of taking both of them out ends up hitting the concrete wall underneath the tire barrier at a pretty good speed here luckily he was okay but a very heavy hit for young money aka kyle larson after the incident with kyle larson i felt like i don't think we had any more rain after that and the track slowly began to dry up and with the round 15 minutes left on the time clock because at this point nascar was pretty much working off the time clock we knew we weren't gonna make it to the 75 laps you had some drivers switch to the slick tires thinking that the track was dry enough or would be dry enough soon enough. For a little bit there, the drivers on the slick tires, those drivers would include Ty Gibbs, Tyler Reddick, Christopher Bell, amongst others. 
It seemed like they were actually losing time to the drivers on the wet weather tires at this time because the track wasn't quite dry enough for the slick tires. But with around nine minutes left in the event, you began to see those slick tires really do their work. Well, with all the drivers on the slick tires, there were some that stayed out on the wet weather tires. They were actually led by Joey Hand. Joey Hand being a sports car GT racer, races in all some of the biggest events in the world, has raced all around the world on road courses. He's a great race car driver racing for RFK this week in the number 60. Actually had a shot at the victory late, but was unable to hold off Alex Bowman Alex Bowman's been looking for a victory, has not won in 80 races. I've been saying it all year long. He's very consistent. He's been very close to snagging that victory a couple of times, and he is long overdue for a win. Takes the lead with around 10 minutes remaining in the event. And at this point, Christopher Bell, Tyler Reddick, and Ty Gibbs, these drivers are really beginning to move. Well, then you actually have Christopher Bell get into an incident with his teammate Martin Truex Jr. Coming off of the corner, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. gets into the back of Truex. Truex gets sideways, taking out Christopher Bell. And at this point in the race, I'd say Christopher Bell was probably the fastest car on the track at this point. Got taken out. It's kind of been the story of Christopher Bell's season. He's either winning the race or something happens that takes him out. A couple of minutes later, they ended up going back racing with around five minutes left in the race. You had Tyler Reddick and Ty Gibbs making their way through the field, trying to get to the drivers on the wet weather tires. Eventually, Tyler Reddick would get up to the second place position, catching up. To Alex Bowman, the race leader, by around three or four seconds a lap. And at that pace, he would have passed him on the last lap. And as he was driving him down, I think he just got maybe overexcited and just overdrove the car a little bit. Ended up hitting the inside wall, trying to cut the corner as close as he could. Costing himself a lot of time. Ends up slightly touching the outside wall as well really slowing him down and costing him any sort of chance at the victory. At this point, Alex Bowman just needed to keep it on the track, and that's all he had to do, and that's what he did. Alex Bowman keeps it out of the wall at the Chicago Street Course, getting his first win in 80 races. A much-needed win for Alex Bowman, who is near the bubble when it came to the playoffs. Overall, has had a very consistent season. But with his three teammates already locked into the playoffs with victories, he had to have felt that pressure, plus a lot of people on social media. And you you heard that with his post-race interview with his winner's press conference that he definitely hears and sees what everybody says about him and his performances. And I really like what I heard from him when it came to that. And now that he's back in victory lane, I'm interested to see how the rest of his season goes. I'm very excited to see how the rest of his season goes because they potentially could have unlocked something here with Bowman. He's one of those drivers that might have been struggling with confidence, as I've mentioned here on the channel before. There's a lot of drivers out there in the field that really struggle with confidence, and maybe Bowman is one of those guys. Maybe we can see him break out the rest of the year. I'm very interested to see that. He was running pretty well, I'd say, at the Chicago Street Course before Blake Harris, his crew chief, and the number 48 crew made that electric call that got him the victory. He was running around 10th most of the race. Good performance from Bowman, being at the right place at the right time, and, the, and a great strategy call from Blake Harris. Gets Alex Bowman back in victory lane, and it's also Blake Harris' first victory as a crew chief. So congratulations to both of them. Before we get to the final thoughts, we've talked about a lot of drivers who did really well in this event, like Joey Hand, like Alex Bowman, SVG, and Kyle Larson before they had their disappointing endings. Let's talk about a couple of drivers who really struggled in this event. Denny Hamlin, one of them, Denny Hamlin. Right when these drivers had to race in the rain, 
He was the one I noticed the most that was struggling, was just dropping like a rock once they started racing in the rain. And to struggle throughout the event, I think I saw him around maybe three or four times spun around. A real difficult day for Denny Hamlin. I think the most obvious one was Josh Berry. Josh Berry hit the tire barriers a bunch of times. Reminded me a lot of Noah Gregson the previous year. Just could not stay out of the tire barriers. A lot of incidents for the number four of Josh Berry. Who's actually been doing really well the last month. Fresh off his announcement of going to the Wood Brothers next year. Had a very difficult day in the streets of Chicago. All right, let me give my final thoughts on this event, starting with my thoughts on the tires and the rain. It was really unfortunate that we saw the rain in this event. It was real awful to see, especially after such a perfect weekend. I personally thought it would be okay if we had a little bit of rain on Sunday, but I was obviously not thinking we would get a big time downpour like we did and having the red flag like we did. And I was pretty happy with everything that NASCAR did, except for when they went back green that one time. They reminded me a lot of Circuit of the Americas when they raced in that. I just think it was way too wet at that time to race the event. I was a big fan of the way they utilized the tires. They gave the teams the option, hey, do you want to use the wet weather tires or do you want to use the slicks? I really liked that they did that it really provided an extra form of strategy and they made it competitive pit stops overall i think that was a great move on nascar's part to take the risk on doing something like that something a lot of the fans have been asking for when it comes to these certain situations all right let's talk a little bit about the timing of this race i was really fond of the way that nascar put it out early on with the chance of rain being there, they said very early on, 8.20 local time, that's it. Once it hits 8.20, that's, we're coming to two laps to go at that point. They made it very clear when it came to that. That way the teams knew what they were dealing with early on. That I was really happy that they did that. One thing that I've seen a lot of people say and discuss online is, oh, they should have moved the race up a couple hours. That way they wouldn't have even had to deal with the rain and I agree kind of I think they could have moved up the race the start time of the race maybe by like a half hour an hour maybe at the most just to give themselves some more time to potentially dry off the track because they still weren't gonna finish the race before the rain came at that point but there's many reasons why NASCAR would not move up the start time for this event first of all they don't usually do that i've seen them do it maybe once maybe two times in the cup series i've seen them do it i've seen them do it for the xfinity series and the truck series multiple times but for the cup series they don't usually do that due to advertising due to fans flying in for the race and traffic reasons and this and that tv tv is probably the biggest reason over everything else Especially for an event like this that's been really built up for a while. A lot of the advertising for NASCAR and NBC has been centered around this race. They had all the concerts. They had all the celebrity appearances. They had a lot of stuff going on with this race in Chicago. They weren't going to move up the event, in my opinion, any more than like 45 minutes, maybe an hour at the very most. They were not going to move up this event especially when it wasn't for sure that we were even going to get rain as i said earlier on in the video it said 30 percent chance of rain last time i checked that's not that's not a huge chance of rain so that's another reason why they weren't going to move up the event and then i've seen a lot i've seen a lot of people say as well why did they even schedule this event at this time knowing the problems they had last season and that is a fair point. I would actually 100% agree with that. That is a fair point. They should have started the race at a different time. I would 100% agree with that. I think they should have started the race at around 12 local time, maybe 1 o'clock local time at the very latest. But the reason why I think they did that was because they're trying to get max viewership. Once again, it comes down to TV. 
They're trying to get max viewership. You have the Formula One race in the early morning at Silverstone. Then after that, you have the IndyCar race at Mid-Ohio, which is also part of NBC, the IndyCar series. So I would say that was why they had it scheduled later on in the in the day, unfortunately. Once again, TV messes with NASCAR probably more than anything. Now my final thoughts on the race in the Chicago street course and its future. I really enjoyed the race for the most part. Even though it wasn't a great race, it was enjoyable to see them out there really struggling in the rain. Like I said, it was it was entertaining. I wouldn't say it was a great race. It was very entertaining to say the least. And when the track was dry, I definitely saw the potential in it when it comes to the Cup Series. We definitely saw it in the Xfinity Series race. The Xfinity race was phenomenal. A great, great race in the Chicago Street Course. And I feel like we could have had something similar with the Cup Series if we didn't have the rain that we had. Unfortunately, that is that is just what happened. I really liked the tires. Like I said, it was a multiple different strategies throughout the day. You saw drivers that were the favorites go out. Kyle Larson and SVG. Christopher Bell had his issues at the end of the race as well. And you ended up having a feel-good story at the end of the race. You had Alex Bowman ending his long winless streak. He had his really bad back injury last year. He also apparently had a brain injury as well. A very difficult time for Alex Bowman in his career. Gets that win and maybe he breaks out for the rest of the season and has a career year. We'll have to wait and see what happens with that. And the future of the Chicago Street Course, ah, I don't really know. I don't really know. I've, I've said here on the channel that it's a three-year deal between the city of Chicago and NASCAR, but I honestly do not think they make it to that third year. I've said it multiple times, and I don't think it's a known thing right now. I think next year at some point we'll get a random news report that the city of Chicago has found a loophole or something in the contract to drop NASCAR as a street course venue. So I, I don't think we'll race at the Chicago Street Course next year, but I'm not going to completely rule it out because technically if you follow the contract, there would be a race next year, but we'll have to see. Ultimately, I think that was probably the last year that we'll have it. And if we have it next year, that will definitely be the last year of the Chicago Street Course. After that, I'd say move it to a different city I'm not sure where, though. I, they have to go to a place where NASCAR isn't isn't at. I think that's the best move. That's one of the reasons why they were trying to get the, the streets of Long Beach, the Long Beach Grand Prix. That's why they were pushing so hard to get that event because it would have put us into the Southern California market, which we're desperately needing to be into. So maybe NASCAR can figure out another town, another city, in Southern California to do a street course event similar to the one at Long Beach or maybe go to Seattle or Denver. The only issue I find with the Seattle, for example, is you face the same problem that you deal with in Chicago. You're going to deal with rain. It rains in Seattle a lot. You're going to deal with that same issue. I think Denver would possibly be a good city because NASCAR is not in that part of the country. But at the same time, Denver isn't one of those big name cities with big name attractions like a Chicago, like a New York City, like a Los Angeles, like even a Seattle. Seattle, you got the needle. It's the biggest city in the Northwest, I'd say, as well. So it's really difficult on where I'd say to have a street course event. I wouldn't really want anywhere in the south, in the southeast or even on the east coast. Because there's already so many tracks on the East Coast. But let me know, where do you think the next street course should be if they decide to do another one? But give me all your thoughts in general down below about the race, about the Chicago street course, about the tires, about everything we had to endure on Sunday in Chicago. But that'll do it for me. Thanks for watching. My name is Kyle, aka Racing Boy Short, saying... 
Peace.